Is this thing the key to unlocking better tasting booze? Today, I'm gonna find out, but first, a little context. Around June of last year, there was a trend going around TikTok that had people whisking their booze, insisting it made it taste better. And knowing firsthand how bad a shake in Manhattan is, I never gave this trend much thought. But thanks to YouTube Shorts, I was recently reminded that this is still, in fact, a thing. So today, I'm gonna give it the old college try. Shaken Manhattans are still bad though. If you don't believe me, try a side-by-side -side sometime. This technique is generally referred to as hyper decanting. And in the context of wine, decanting is pouring the wine you're drinking into another vessel to increase the surface area of the wine, which makes it oxidize faster, enhancing its flavor. So I think the reasoning behind hyper decanting is artificially induce a bunch of aeration and it'll make whatever you're drinking taste better. Maybe. In any case, if sommeliers do it, it's worth trying because they can have some very cool tricks up their sleeve. Even if a lot of them are weird. So today I'm gonna whisk up a bunch of different kinds of booze and see what happens. First things first. Dad, just kidding. I'll start here. Yeah, that's how that's supposed to taste. Caramel, peanut brittle. Whiskey snobs like to shit on it, but it's not bad, just overpriced. Definitely a hotter nose. This is not better. It's not bad, but there's definitely more alcohol burn and those caramel notes are gone. Yeah, Weller would not whisk again. Next up, this guy. A lot of the early experiments I saw this, people were using tequila and they seem to be thrilled with the results. So this should be good. Man, this stuff is good. This may be the best budget tequila on earth. There are more of certain flavors there. The grassy agave notes are coming through a little more. I wouldn't say this is better or worse, just a little different. And I honestly thought I had more Glencairns, but apparently all I have is two, so I'm gonna do this. <laughs> and for funsies, let's try some Fortaleza Still Strength. Oof, not that much. Oh man, this stuff is good. Anyone who thinks there's no reason to sip a Blanco needs to try this. Oh, this is interesting. This brings out the spice notes more. There's a touch less grassiness and a touch more complexity. I might whisk this one again, who knows? <laughs> Next up, a little bit of mezcal. Never get tired of a good Espadine. And yes, I am rinsing this whisk between uses. This is weird because the thing I like about Espadines is this minerality that I often describe to people as granite. The best Espadines make me feel like I'm licking a rock and whisking this kind of removes that flavor note, which is unfortunate because that's why I drink them. It's also worth noting that these changes don't last very long. I think in order for this hack, if that's what you want to call it, to work, it only lasts as long as the bubbles do, and that's not that long. Bye. All right, gin, let's check it out. Man, I love this stuff. Beef eater can be kind of polarizing and uh, I don't really know why. It is, in my opinion, the ultimate workhorse gin. It has all the flavors you want in a London dry. One of my favorite things about beef eater is the citrus notes, orange peel, lime peel, and this brings out those notes. I would whisk this again, except I almost never drink gin neat. Still gonna go back for seconds though. And now, how about some rum? I absolutely love Probitas. Without going into too much detail, this is a mix of rums from Barbados and Jamaica, and it has the dryness of Bajan rums with the light funk associated with Jamaicans. This is great stuff. Yeah, whisking does the nose no benefit. Interesting. Whisking this one changes the texture, giving it an almost creamy mouthfeel, and the funkiness is a little more pronounced. It's almost as if aeration brings the esters a little bit more forward flavor-wise, which would explain why Probitas is such good daiquiri rum. By shaking it, you're aerating the drink already. Down you go. Speaking of four square, I haven't tried this yet, today's the day. I love this rum. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Four Square is my favorite rum distillery on earth. Butterscotch, cinnamon, and it's 120 proof. Feels immoral. <laughs> 
again with the creamier mouthfeel, a little bit hotter, but at the end of the day, the welcome wagon flavors that make this rum so enticing are diminished. Yeah, would not whisk again. Sorry, Richard. And we might as well do another Hampton. Nine years old, almost 63% ABV, and one of only 273 bottles. I made a video about it, which you can check out if you like. What am I doing? Not surprisingly, super hot. I previously described this rum as tasting like a tire fire, and that description holds up. Also notes of tropical fruit. The flavor here is very dense. I like it a lot. Whisking actually mellows this one out a little. Makes it a little easier to drink. Not that that makes it better. Sorry. Next up, scotch. From a distillery whose name I dare not try and pronounce. And I'm really starting to feel this. 14 years old in cask strength, so uh, no big deal. Delicious. This is how scotch is supposed to taste. In two words, honey and heather. If you know, you know. Yeah, this doesn't make this better. Those lovely honey and heather notes are diminished. Have to reach around this time. What? That was a single entendre. Now I can't whisk every bottle I own, otherwise this video would be very long and very boring, but there are three more I want to try. Starting with Campari. We all know what that tastes like. It's pretty. Nah, definitely worse. The aeration changes the mouthfeel, decreasing the sense of body. Dislike. Of course, I gotta try for net. Yeah. Well, it's a pretty color. Huh. I've always likened drinking Fernet to getting hit in the face with eucalyptus branch, but this mellows out all those flavors. If anything, this is Fernet with training wheels. And I don't hate it. If you've never liked Fernet, you might like this. Bye. And for the last one, of course I gotta go green. I love this stuff. Chartreuse really is one of those magic liqueurs. It's a cult, and one I'm glad to be in. And if you're not, I hope I can get you on board someday. As liqueurs go, chartreuse isn't a word, it's a sentence, or even a paragraph. And what makes it special is the flavor and the mouthfeel, and whisking increases one and decreases the other. Again, I don't hate it, I don't like it, it's just different. Whoop. Not gonna lie, I'm rather lightheaded right now, so I'm gonna put a pin in this little experiment and pick it up tomorrow. However... Should I? I smell rum before anything else. Eh, why not? Oh. <laughs> no. But then again. <coughs> Still no. This is bad in all kinds of ways. It's one of the most complex things I've ever tasted, but that's not necessarily a good thing. But since I've got it. This is super weird, and I kind of love it. The next day. Good morning. Final thoughts. There's no doubt in my mind that whisking affects how we perceive the alcohol consumption experience, most notably in nose flavor and mouthfeel. But the results were all over the place. It brought out different things, but with no real consistency. I couldn't find a common denominator of why it affected some things and not others. It's not like it only worked on premium spirits. Plus, the effects didn't last very long. I found myself re-whisking between sips. Also, the notion that whisking might enhance flavor is completely counterintuitive, given what I've come to understand about why we stir cocktails, which I talk about in this video. But these are my opinions, and I'm just another talking head on the end. Internet. Give this a shot, but if you think it might be the next big thing in drinking, let me ask. Do you know anyone is doing it? Turn camera.